Hello, and thank you for joining me for 4 Minute Friday. My name is Dan Warren, and I'm an application engineer here at TPM. Today we're going to talk about a few tips and tricks that can help out your workflows in Navisworks. Tip number one, use Hide Selected to review model elements. So as we're going through our initial model review, um, what we're going to do is it's important to establish a good understanding of the general model. So you can see here in this, uh, this pre-recorded review, I'm going through and I am quickly selecting elements and then I'm using the hide isolate button so that I can get a better understanding of the elements, um, both at the granular level and as the, how they all kind of come together in the whole model. Now I'll be using hide unselected a lot, which will go ahead and bring us into our second tip, which is to make sure you go ahead and add any tools you'll be using frequently to the quick access ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click on my hide unselected tool. I'm going to add it to my quick access toolbar. Uh, the advantage to that is that now, uh, not only is it there, but if I press the alt key, I now have a quick numbered shortcut for that tool and I can get to it by hitting alt nine very quickly. Um, and as I'm going to go through now and I can quickly just activate that tool and deactivate it on the fly, uh, thus accelerating my review process. A third tip is to use color overrides to identify duplicate geometry. So looking at these two geometries, I know that there's probably redundant geometry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to uh, do an override item by color. And then I'm going to do something that stands out like orange. And what this allows me to do is to quickly review the two model elements without having to select them. Um, I could see here which one of these objects I would want to use in my clash detection uh, just because it seems to line up better th than everything else. Tip number four is to use your search sets to organize your clash tests. So what I've done here is I've predefined some search sets, uh, in this case architectural, mechanical, and plumbing, and I'm going to be using these to define my clash detection tests later on. So when we're in the clash detection uh, tool, we can go in and we can choose sets for each of our sections A and B for each of our tests. So here I'm doing mechanical versus pipe and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to set my uh, sets to mechanical versus structural for my second test. Um, these drop downs allow me to pick specific sets and if these are predefined this will save you a lot of time when setting up your uh, clash tests, especially if they're clash tests that are used over and over again between projects. Tip number five, use Appearance Profile to simplify model navigation. The Appearance Profiler tool allows me to do uh, set appearances for uh, my different sets. So I'm going to come in here and for my walls I'm going to set a color and a transparency. Um, and it, it helps to test them as you go through them so you see how they work. And and I'm going to set a different color and transparency for the different modeling elements. Uh, the ultimate goal here is to set this up in a manner so that when I'm tr navigating the model, it's very apparent what objects I'm seeing at a time. Uh, so I'm going to set my mechanical to blue, and I'm going to set my plumbing to green. And then once this is all set up, it allows us to uh, quickly go in, and as we're navigating, we can see the individual systems really pop, and it, it helps us kind of see where we are in the model and we can quickly differentiate items without even having to pick on them. So our sixth and final tip is to use selection filtering to quickly group our clashes. So once we've run our clash report and we're looking at our different uh, clashes, we can go in, we can pick an object and use our inclusive filter from our selection filter. And what that allows us to do is then group the clashes and any clashes that are outside of that will be pulled out. So once we group these together, we can go through and now we can start grouping elements that have multiple clashes on single items. So these pieces of pipe that are traveling through this piece of steel can be grouped together. Using this method, I can quickly shave off several uh, clashes within a large clash report. Um, it's a very quick way to go through and filter out the different clashes into smaller groups. So once again, my name is Dan Warren with TPM, and I thank you for joining me for 4-Minute Friday.